they were counted worthy of eternity. <clears throat> that they were martyrs of the preceding period. The period of the fourth seal is clear from the fact that they were already dead when the fifth seal opened. <clears throat> Moreover, an altar denotes renewal of faith, reformation. That is what <clears throat> it meant to Noah, to Abraham, as we mentioned before. They always set up their altar <clears throat> as they traveled. It's for worship. That's what it meant for Jacob also. In the instance, they built their altars. Genesis 8, 20, and you can read that. The souls being under the altar indicates that they sacrificed their lives for a cause similar to the cause of the martyrs during the Protestant Reformation. <clears throat> And now built an altar unto the Lord. We look at to this question: How long shall be the vision concerning the day and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the oath to be trodden underfoot? The answer came resoundingly unto two thousand and three hundred days. Then shall this sanctuary be cleansed. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Brothers and sisters, the cleansing of that sanctuary started since 1844. We are living in the Day of Atonement. You know what the Day of Atonement means? Well, what does it mean to, or what it meant to the Israelite is that Everyone was sanctioned to the sanctuary service, the Day of Atonement, and to observe that. <clears throat> not to go to work, not to stay away, not to be um, <clears throat> dismissive of that because it was a critical day. We are living in that day. It's a day that calls our attention <clears throat> of sin being removed from the sanctuary. And this is telling us that God is in the last leg. The last effort, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> uh, let's draw near. Let us draw near. Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That is, within the 2,300 days, the daily shall be taken away the transgression of desolation set up the sanctuary and the host shall be trodden on their foot. After this the sanctuary is to be cleansed. And the question, O long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge? <clears throat> also the answer that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servant <clears throat> also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Ah. This concretely proves that 
the persecution and the martyrdom of the fourth seal were to overlap. The fifth seal. And that the judgment of the dead, the martyr, was not to begin until after the persecution had ceased. But that then it would certainly begin. And it did. In 1844, all this started in the heavenly sanctuary. First the apostles sold under the altar. Second the fellow servant and their brethren that should be killed, the reformers. O long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge all them. The judgment began after the persecution. It puts us in 1844. Because we know from 538 to 1798, the dark ages of religion, the judgment of God begins, begun after that, showing us on point that the Seventh Day Adventist movement was born on the foundation of this prophecy. A people declaring the judgment of God. A people declaring judgment. That's the message of the hour. That's the message of warning. And it's the message to a dying world. It encompasses the peace. It encompasses brothers and sisters, the seal to be protected. So when we, when we run about with the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast, what about the seal of God, the seal of God? That's first and foremost, really. That's first and foremost, brothers and sisters. Well, this morning we are going to leave it at the six leave it at the sixth seal. We look at the fifth. So the sixth seal <coughs> is where we are going to find ourselves. <coughs> so come Sabbath morning or so. We will pick up the seal, seal number six, the sixth period. <clears throat> the sixth period of this earth history, the message of God and those who are sealed by the seal of the living God. How about that? So, <clears throat> we want to just thank you for stopping by with us. See if I can find a song that I can close with. Um, yes. So what have we learned today? We have learned about seal. Well, first of all, four horses show us the works of man that has brought the changes to this world, the riders on the horses. God has given us our time. Now we are looking at God's time, God's work. God's day, <clears throat> the day of God, we looked at the fact that the 
fifth seal brought about those souls under the altar and the announcement of the judgment which is the same as the cleansing of the sanctuary ensued. Excuse me. Now we ought to know that this judgment that started in 1844 very soon what is happening in heaven will extend to the church of God in, uh, on earth the church with the message of the judgment very soon that will take place the word of God says in the great controversy um, let me see if I can find that I have a book over here, so let me read that book for you. I could pull it up on the computer, but maybe I'll find it in the great controversy. And read it for you as we... <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> it tells us, brothers and sisters, that Yes, this is a great controversy, a little old and rusty. But, I'm going to find it for you right quick. <coughs> it's 400... Four hundred. What is the sanctuary? What is the sanctuary? Let me get these things together. What is the sanctuary? <coughs> Four hundred and twenty. Just bear with me, I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> on page 421 it says, For 18 centuries this work of ministration continued in the first apartment of the sanctuary, the blood of Christ pleaded in behalf of penitent believers secured their pardon and acceptance with the Father, yet their sin still remained upon the book, books of record. Yes, we get the pardon, but the sin remained until that blotting of day. When it comes to our time, hang with me. Uh, if it's not 420, it's 480. <coughs> now, While the investigative judgment, this is 425, is going forward in heaven, while the sins of penitent believers are being removed <clears throat> from this sanctuary, there is to be a special work of purification, of putting away of sin among God's people upon earth. This work is more clearly presented in the messages of Revelation 14. The three angels' messages, right? <clears throat> the three angels' messages. Revelation 14. 
Now, we will have to consult Revelation 14 messages and see what it says. And Revelation 14 will tell us that there will be the ceiling of one forty and four thousand <coughs> who are without guile in their mouth. That's a part of the judgment. Involves his church first. First Peter four seventy. Judgment begins first in in what? In the house of God. Yes. So while that, while this work is going on in heaven, let me go to 480 and see if I find another one that I want to bring to your attention. <clears throat> while that is happening, brothers and sisters, 480 says, Again, in the typical service, only those who had come before God with confession and repentance and whose sin through the blood of the sin offering were transferred to the sanctuary had a part in the service of the day of atonement. So in the great day of final atonement and investigative judgment, the only cases considered are those who professed, are those of the professed people of God. The judgment of the wicked is a distinct and separate work and takes place at a later period. So what the word is telling us this morning, from we are reading from excerpts from the great controversy, it is telling us, brothers and sisters, that <coughs> that it's 490, we're going that that was 480, that the cases that are being considered now are God's people, the church, those who profess, who believe. In 490, this is my last, this is what I want to bring to your attention. Listen to this. Solemn are the scenes connected with the closing work of atonement. The closing work of atonement. That's where we are. And this is a great controversy 490, write that down, under the topic, Facing Life's Record. Facing Life's Record. It says here, Solemn are the scenes connected with the closing work of the atonement. Momentous are the interest involved therein. The judgment... The judgment is now passing in this sanctuary above. For many years, this work has been in progress. Soon, none know how soon it will pass to the cases of the living. Brothers and sisters, this is most urgent a message through the Seventh-day Adventist Church because that's where it is. We've got to follow the message of God. There's no way around that. This message, brothers and sisters, is telling us that although we are used to 
the judgment, the investigative judgment of the dead, soon it will pass to the living. This is the most critical period of earth history that we're living in. I told you up front when we started that we are not to take this message. We are not to take sin lightly. Disobedience are breaking the law of God, are disobeying God's word. <clears throat> don't take it lightly because we don't know the mystery of sinfulness. The mystery of sin. But I want to bring all this to your attention and hope that the Holy Spirit will make it plain that the message of the judgment of the, the investigative judgment of the dead will move to a phase in soon the judgment of the living. What does that mean to us? Well, it means, brothers and sisters, that God has sent to his church a message of the judgment of the living. which we don't hear or we don't understand and we ought to the message of the judgment of the living <clears throat> the message of the judgment of the living brothers and sisters is something that we need to inquire about <clears throat> and that's what we have been talking about we don't understand these things unless we get into the judgment of the living message it's called the eleventh hour call a call within a call as brought out from Matthew chapter 20 God has reached number seven period. The Laodicean church, number seven. He cannot and he will not call because he, he doesn't go against, he can't go against his word. That's his integrity. God cannot call another organization. So he has to deal with him, the one that is representing him at this time. Yes, he could have moved on from the Jewish church to the Christian church. But now he can't move from the Laodicean to anything else because we have reached the zenith, the pinnacle, the end. And therefore God is working within. He's working within. And I hope we... We catch a vision there. He's working with him. So, read this for yourself. Facing Life's Record, page 490 of The Great Controversy. Soon, no, no, how soon, the judgment will pass from the dead to the living. God bless you this morning. All right. See if I can sing this song. Oh. Which one is this song? See if I can sing this song. In the dark of the midnight of the evening, while the storm pulls about me, and there's no hiding place, 
May the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of the hand. Keep me safe. Till the storm passes by Many times Satan whispered There's no need to try For there's no end of sorrow There's no hope by and by But I know thou art with me and tomorrow I will rise Where the storms never darken the skies Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever from the sky Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. When the long night is ended and the storms come no more, let me stand in thy presence on the bright, peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes. Lord, I may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Sing the song. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand, keep me safe. Till the storm passes by Yes, keep me safe Till the storm passes by Amen May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the comfort, the rest, remain and abide with us now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Thursday. Join us again as we take our time and understand the cleansing of this sanctuary. God bless you.